there's lots of epidemiological research showing that first and second generation immigrants are at higher risk for psychosis. And this has been reported in many places in the world, particularly in London in the UK. Now, what we do not know is the mechanism by which immigration may play a role. What these studies are showing is that there is dopamine seems to be involved. Immigrants have higher release of dopamine as compared to host Canadians in our case. We did the same experiment in London in the UK and we found similarly that immigrants to the UK have also higher dopamine synthesis capacity as compared to healthy volunteers. Again, showing the same pathway where dopamine transmission is increased in immigrants as compared to hosts. So this is the first investigation into the neurochemical systems involved in psychosis risk in immigrants as compared to hosts, either British or Canadian. We looked into markers of social stress, social value, and what we've seen is that this neurochemical alteration relate to these measures of social stress. And so this fits well with the social defeat hypothesis suggesting that how people feel in their environment actually changes how the brain responds to it. What they have done in the UK in London, they looked into dopamine synthesis capacity or the ability of the brain to synthesize or to create dopamine. And what we saw there is that there is more creation of dopamine in the brain of immigrants as compared to healthy volunteers. And what we found is that healthy volunteers do not really or regulate the release of dopamine whereas patients with schizophrenia have a massive release of dopamine. What we saw is that immigration plays a role, such that immigrants, either healthy or high risk or patients, always release more dopamine as compared to hosts. Certainly, there is a strong genetic load that we investigate. It's a population who is at risk, either because they have a first-degree family with a major psychotic disorder, but what's really important is function. So the genes are not enough. The genes interacting with the environment. What this high-risk population is, is these young people who either have genetic high risk concurrently with a drop in function. So at this very young age, what may happen is they have some symptoms, but they haven't yet developed the disease. So this is the high-risk population. There could be a situation where genes alone can cause the disease, but we haven't seen that. It's always a combination of factors of gene together with environment. We don't understand whether just by changing the environment or changing genes potentially one day, whether we can actually prevent the disease from happening. We need really to do much more research to understand the interaction between the environment and the genes. There is something about some immigrants who can use their resilience, whereas some other people may not have them. And so this is why the program that we've developed here, the Focus on Youth Psychosis Prevention Program, actually is geared towards increasing resilience in youth. Because we believe that by helping with that, we can actually reduce or help people regulate stress levels, which are a major trigger for psychosis. So psychosis risk is mostly people who start to have some symptoms of psychosis but do not have a full psychotic break. Some cultures will want to consult earlier, sometimes when the parents are involved. Many a times youth want to do these things on their own and they don't share it with their parents. This is very common as well. These young people are making decisions on their own for the first time. So it's the combination of the age and being in an environment that's difficult, having symptoms that are difficult to handle. Treatment, I have to say, at the very, very early stages, is very, very different than the treatment when someone is already sick. When you're just so showing some signs of the disease, the treatments are completely different. It's no different than when someone has high cholesterol versus someone having a heart attack. We work around resilience, we work around highlighting the importance of sleep, for instance. We do all of these things that really talked about preventive strategies for preventing a major psychotic break. For people who have had a major psychotic break, uh, medications are still are the first line of treatment. There are several options, and the ones that we have today have a better profile of side effects. But nonetheless, medications are really very important. Now, of course, we know that just medication alone is not sufficient. We really need, again, talking about the environment, we need to engage them and their families or their peers. We need to engage in uh, healthy lifestyles and uh, you know, other psychosocial interventions are very, very important. Some evidence to prove that there is a link between being an immigrant and having some brain changes, I guess. It's important to realize this is not causal. It is not a cause 
right? I'm an immigrant and I may have this increase in dopamine, but that doesn't mean I'm psychotic. So it's not linear. This is the thing, it's very complex. There's so many factors uh, taking part. So this is why, despite the fact that this is the first paper looking at this factor, how biology interacts with the immigration experience, I guess, it's not the complete story. So this is why we are going after trying to connect with more people and offer support. And also one thing that we learn is that, you know, you become a little bit more humble. Right? Because you hear people's stories and you realize that we are here to, to listen to these people and to have them talk to us and tell us what they are going through. We psychiatrists need to do a better job in engaging the community. We need to have youth services that are appealing to youth and that they feel that they can talk to us without consequences.